Westminster Abbey getting ready for a big event in just a couple months. Prince William and Kate Middleton will tie the knot on April 29th, actually three months away, with only 97 days left until the big day. We thought we'd help them out and take a look at the royal to-do list. How nice of us. To fill us in on the details, CBS News royal contributor Victoria Arbiter. Victoria, good to see you. Good morning. I love this countdown you've got going. Yeah, we got it. Every, every second. We got it with a clock right there. We're, we're keep, <laughs> keeping track of it. Stuff. We're going to get to the specific to-do list in just a second, but what have they done so far to get ready for the wedding? So far, as you mentioned, we know that April 29th is the date. We know that the wedding is at 11 a.m. at Westminster Abbey. Uh -huh. Kate will arrive by car, which in the beginning was definitely, everyone was talking about how that was a security issue. It's also a practical issue because when Diana arrived at St. Paul's Cathedral, she had this huge dress just squashed into right. one of those tiny old carriages. And so when she got out, her dress was so creased. So rather than ooing and aahing at how beautiful the dress was, we were all looking at how creased it was. So Kate <laughs> will have more room in a car. We also know that three levels of the church hierarchy are officiating the wedding. We have the Dean of Westminster, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who's the ecclesiastical head of the Church of England. So mm -hmm. he's doing the important job of actually marrying William and Kate. And then the Bishop of London is giving the address, uh, which is the sermon. And then following the service, there will be two receptions at Buckingham Palace. The Queen is hosting a more formal affair. And then Prince Charles will have a private personal dinner and dancing later okay, that night. A lot going on. Okay, let's get to the to-do list. The first thing, somebody in the meeting said the first thing is the prenup, but I'm guessing that's not no, on no, the list. No, I don't think they're worrying about that. All right, yet. first on the list, <laughs> the guest list. What do we know about that? Oh, the guest list. Well, it's the Lord Chamberlain's job. He's the most senior official in the Queen's household to see that nothing goes wrong with this wedding. And that, of course, becomes the guest list as well. So at this point, William is not the direct heir to the throne, which means the pressure's off a little mm. bit in terms of having to invite all the global heads of state. Yeah. There will certainly be foreign dignitaries there. Perhaps Greece or Spain will send a, re will send a representative from their royal families. Um, there will be all number of VIPs, but this guest list will not be made public before the wedding. So okay. on the wedding, it's a real who's who of spot the famous face. Right, let's go through the rest of these pretty quickly. One thing that keeps me up at night, next on the to-do list, Kate's dress. Kate's dress. What do we know about that? Still speculation. Bruce Oldfield is leading the pack of British designers. Another lady, Alice Templey, was thrown out this week. But I would say definitely British, but we don't know anything else at this point. Rings, a big issue on the to-do list. This is a nice royal tidbit. The late Queen Mother in 1923 started a custom of using Welsh gold for her wedding ring. Subsequent royal brides, the Queen, Princess Margaret, and Diana all used gold from the same nugget. But that very quickly ran out. So in 1981, the British Royal Legion gave the Queen a new nugget for future royal brides. It was used for Camilla's ring, for Sarah Ferguson's, and it's likely it'll be used for Kate's. A nugget, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and the cake, that's a big issue as well. Cake, cake, it's a big issue. No precedent has been set before the Royal Navy made Diana's cake but David's cakes of Merseyside made Andrew and Fergie's. So I would imagine at the moment there's all sorts of delicious samplings being sent to Buckingham Palace <laughs> for them to choose one. I understand the Brits are taking bets <laughs> on this whole affair. Is that correct? That is correct. English people love to have a bit of fun with this. We've got the pub staying open late over the royal wedding weekend. We've got a four-day weekend. And so betting is another way to get involved and have a bit of a laugh, really. What are then, they betting on? Well, they're betting on um, will Kate be late to the church? And if she is, how many minutes late? The length of her train. Um, who Harry's going to take as his date? But recently, actually, one, one bet was closed down because people in general are, are betting around $5 or so. Uh -huh. They're not fussed about winning. It's about having fun. But someone came in and offered up $8,000 on the honeymoon destination being Kenya, and that was awfully fishy with that <laughs> sum of money. So that was quickly shut down as possible inside information. Interesting stuff. Victoria Arbiter, welcome to CBS. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so and much. We'll be talking to you a lot over the next few months. Sounds good. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> Thank you for coming in.